Hey, mates, welcome once again into the Little Dum Dum Club for another week. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Tommy Dasselow, and with me, as always, the other half of the show, Carl Chandler. G'day, dickhead. And joining us today, two very special guests. Please welcome back into the Little Dum Dum Club, Tom Ballard and Hamish Blake. Yeah. Yay! Yay! We're back, hey, baby. baby. Oh, Found Hamish. some time. You moved away from Melbourne. Uh, we, we weren't able to have you regularly pop into our live shows anymore. And all it took was cases absolutely spiralling up there for you to be locked inside and back on the show. Feels good, I guess. Surfing the wave. Yeah, it's, feel, it's good. I'm an absolute black belt when it comes to lockdowns now. Did <laughs> the full Melbourne lockdown, moved to Sydney just in time yep. to do yep. it all again, baby. Yep. Yep. Yeah. This well, is, we thank you. And this is, thank you. I'm like the special ops version of, of lockdowns. Like if you want yeah. a guy that knows how to lockdown, you come see me. Well, well, you, you, you're the face of Australian tourism. Can you tell me where I can go on holidays within five kilometres of Hawthorne? <laughs> tell you what, I can, I, can see a, uh, I can see a little window in the reflection of your wardrobe mirror there. And I, well, I, that's lovely this time of year. I, if, I to, if, I had to, if I had to holiday in any of our backgrounds, I'm 100% choosing Tommy's. The electronic yes. drum kit has yes. a yes. lot of interest from yeah. this guy. I've, I've owned two in my life i've actually owned three electronic drum kits okay. and the third one was where i was like no seriously i'm gonna do this like i'm really gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna learn yeah i'm, I'm gonna hey, learn what's on, it took, and, it, it took you three so did you buy two different ones and then yep, throw them sold, away bought sold so oh, the very right. first one i bought was like it was probably like 12 years ago i was living with two of my buddies john and hayda living in a bit of a we had like a kind of the house from big the movie like we had like arcade oh, yeah, games yeah. And, Mm-hmm. We had a room with a table tennis table that we, and all John's shit furniture. The room, the couches went to die in and had a table tennis table. So I was like, we've got this little nook next to the kitchen. It was like an old house with a lot of weird rooms, kind of a bit wizardy. And so I was like, what, what can we put in the nook? And I was like, let's get an electronic drum kit. That is what mm-hmm. we need in this house. Bought it on it, like bought it on a whim on eBay, texted the guys. I was like, guys, don't get like, get excited. When you get home, we have an electronic drum kit. <laughs> I, except as you would know, Tommy, you either need to put headphones on yep. or plug it into an amp because the kit is just a series of pads <laughs> Plastic. that yeah. make a fake drum noise. And yep. through the magic of computers, it simulates drums. John was such a child, but like we got home that night, like at five o'clock, John was in his undies, just like like red hot chili peppers style just like <laughs> in, just un, only undies like playing the kit as hard as he could turn it turned around and went mate this is awesome it's like john it's, it's not plugged in like it's you just you just you're playing like you're like playing ice cream tubs you're, like, yeah, you're, 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 you're playing the acoustic drums <laughs> you're playing the acoustic <laughs> electronic drums which yeah. is not a great sound it's like they're all the same noise johnny like you're playing mouse pads Basically, yeah. it was like, and then I we played like I bought home the amp, so I plugged it in and then turned it on, and it makes all the different drum noises, and then it, that blew his mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was a, so. Were any of you at that point? Were you any of you like into the drums at all? Like, did he know how to play, or was he just like getting on there? And no, no, no. We all just loved the, the vibe of it, and and I had I was like, <laughs> I don't want to learn, but I just want to learn how to play cool songs. I'm not interested in timing. I'm not interested in notes. I just want to yeah. rock. And <laughs> timing is a big one. I've had. <laughs> I've had several attempts at music with that policy. Like I'd love to learn <laughs> piano, but I'm, I'm not doing the letters and not, I'm just not doing yeah. the notes. I yeah. just want there's to a, learn. How there's to play a lot like, of people. Yeah. There's a I lot of people. Play like the, the, best, the-, <laughs> the best jazz piano in the world, but I'm not interested in the technical side of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of people rocking up to the Blake household over the years from Gumtree buying a lot of secondhand <laughs> musical equipment. <laughs> Mate, we are, yeah, we're, we're like, we're like a Gumtree hub. We basically, yeah. <laughs> we haven't, we, we, I, I just have at the front of my house, like those masking tape X's for social distancing. Cause I'm, we have cues that often. Outside the house. <laughs> People come to pick up the shit that I bought online. <laughs> Your house is an exposure site. COVID ripping its way <laughs> through the Australia post. All, yeah. all, <laughs> you're always just, just, just tier three, just cause the chances are someone's got it. Like always just a, a steady hum tier three site. <laughs> So you get rid of the first drum kit and then when's the second one come into your life? What, what it was exactly the same way. I was like, because that was a cheap one. We bought like an $800 one or something like, which mm-hmm. is not cheap, but there are really high-end ones. So I thought I was like, we're not learning this. And then 
then like I had the same the same kind of bug caught me two years later and I was like no this time I'm doing yeah. it <laughs> same thing just fell by the wayside yeah then the third one came back when we're on, we're on radio and we like formed a band yes and, and then I was like okay I'll be the drummer and I'll get into this and <laughs> that one that one I still own yep but it's, as you can tell from, I don't know how often you're playing your drum kit, like they're a pretty, they take up a fair bit of surface area in yep. your house. Yep. And if you're not playing it on the reg, it <laughs> really begins to like gnaw away at you with how much space it's taking up. So mm-hmm. I gave it to Jack, our, who presses the buttons for us on our podcast on the Hamish and Andy show, because he's like quite into music. And he's like, man, I was like, look, I'm going to rent the kit to you for a dollar a month. Pretty good deal. <laughs> good. Yep. And he's like, yes, love it, man. Love it. Get to play him a lot. And, uh, and then Andy's like, don't do it, man. He's just doing it because they're fucking annoying to store. Yeah. And then two, two months. And I made Jack sign like a three-year lease. Right. <laughs> for $36. $36. Bucks. Nice. And, then, and then like two months later, Jack's like, I think I want to give them back. It's like, mate, you signed the lease. Yep. <laughs> Enjoy them. I've, You've rented I've them. Spent- I spent the thirty six bucks. You can't get it back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, I think and I then, can top that. And then I rented. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go, Tommy. No, I rented the. I, he didn't buy the stool. I read, sold the stool to him for ten bucks as well. There you oh, go. Nice. There you go. Go, Tommy. Go. True. Well, I think I can beat that. When I first moved to Sydney uh, to do radio, I wanted to keep playing the piano. I had a piano in my uh, childhood home. I had piano lessons when I was growing up. And I moved to Sydney and I thought I deserved a treat uh, for getting this big, big fancy job. So I bought a Pianino, which is like a shortened version of a, of a, of a real piano, right? So not an electric keyboard because I didn't like electric keyboards and like weighted keys or whatever. I didn't get the real sensation of playing a um, piano. So a full heavy Pianino uh, installed in my uh, apartment in Sydney, which had to go up 60 stairs. I had to get (laughs) two giant Tongan men lifted up those stairs, which I enjoyed. And uh, never played it once. Never played it once. Wow. wow. What's your history? What's your history on the piano? I got the lessons in high school and I really loved Ben Folds, big Ben Folds fan. So I really right. tried to learn all his songs. What, and uh, what's, your, what's, your, what's your best song? What was your best song? Like, were you like, okay, I can. Uh, if, 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 if we gave you a week of brushing back up, what could you get mm. back up to? I know a song by Ben Folds 5 called Philosophy which uh, kind of looks impressive when you play it. That was probably mm-hmm. as good as I got. Yeah. That's uh, that's like 98% of the reason you, anyone would learn piano. <laughs> yeah, well, I did it for the pussy. You know, the piano pussy is pretty good. So um, obviously yeah, I've, I've, well. I've, I've, got, I've got two keyboards. Same, same thing. I had to do lockdown last year and I bought a keyboard, like a piano, like not a synth, but like a a replica kind of keyboard to learn so you can play piano because I thought it'd be awesome to come back home because I was away from my family for three weeks. And I was like, imagine coming back through the door and being like, guys, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Dad's a pianist. Because I was making, I was shooting Le- Lego Masters. I was shooting the Lego show and I was like on set all day. I thought I could have it in my green room, but that didn't work. I, I just had a, a I, service I love this. I, in. I love this, by the way, it's the in- thought that, the thought, back yourself, Amish, like the thought that yeah. you're away from your kid, your five-year-old kid or whatever, for like three yeah. weeks, and the thought that you're going to walk through the door and he hasn't seen you for three weeks, and your thought is, he's going to say, yeah, but can you play Green Sleeves? Yeah. Like, Dude, do you know what I was, do you know, do you know what I, was I was trying to learn um, the Snoopy theme song, like by Wynton Marsalis. Do you know that? The, do, 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 do. You remember like, the jazz piano that they yeah. put over the Snoopy cartoons? Right. And I was, I was going, you're right. But you know, the, all the time in my head, because I can't, again, can't play piano, but I was like, it's it just got to be like timing, hands, placement, and pressure, right? Like, you know, <laughs> surely if you just watch it enough, you can remember the pattern. <laughs> like, yeah, I, 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 piano is like falling off a bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I know that the whole reason they teach you the notes and like how to read music is the same reason they teach you the alphabet and how to understand words, because that's... It's easier to then read a book rather than remembering yeah. the whole book after been, someone tells it to you. You've been spoiled by your experience with the drums because the drums you very much can vibe it out. You can just get on the stool right. and kind of totally. and kind of feel it out. But every other instrument, you're in trouble if you think you're getting away with that. Well, I'll be honest with you. I had we had a bet on the radio show after I bought the electronic drum, the third kit, which was that I couldn't learn "Stay Way to Heaven" drumming mm-hmm. in a month. 
And I learned it. I got it. And, and, and the way I learned it was pretty much just listening to the song a hundred times a day. Yeah. yeah. And then, then getting someone that was a good drummer to go, okay, so, you know, well done. You know the song, but yeah. here's, here's how you take it from your brain to your hands. <laughs> and you've got to kind of do it this way. And it was like, I was obviously not John Bonham, like I was the, like a really shit version, but I played it with a, like we did a gig at the corner and like 500 people came and paid $2, I think it was, to like, for one song. <laughs> so it was like okay, great. a very quick, cheap daytime gig. Do you want to come and watch one man try and, try and drum um, Stairway to Heaven? So you can, can I just ask, can, can I just ask, so it's, it's what was it, $2 a month for the to hire the drums, two bucks to one, get into the corner hotel to see month, you yeah. guys, yeah, to yeah. see you guys. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm running. Like, you, you don't have this. You, you don't have the same contract with radio, do you? You don't. You know, <laughs> you up it a little bit, don't you? Thirty cents a word. Fifty cents. Fifty cents if it's a big one. But yeah, we, I'm running. My drumming career runs off the same economics as like a lemonade stall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I used to get. I used to, I used to get like 10 cents a handball when I played junior football and 20 cents a kick and stuff. It's the same, the same economics. <laughs> I like this. Uh, you out to the country leagues. I like this big bet for your uh, corner hotel gig too of like, I bet you, you can't learn the drums to a song that doesn't really have drums in it for about three quarters worth of the song. <laughs> like, yeah, good call. Good call. Fair <laughs> enough. But let's not forget. I mean, that was noted because it's like, it's like a seven minute song and you're like the first five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you're just clean, taking a put your feet up. <laughs> just having a sit, tell it like you know, thumbs yeah. up into the still, rhythm guitar, yeah. like but still yeah, counting yeah, along. Yeah. It's like two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next time I'll learn the triangle in Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that horrible yeah, so, solo bit in karaoke where you're just standing <laughs> there in the three minute mark, going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bagpipe bit to who let the dogs out. <laughs> but but when it when it kicks in, like it's for those that are familiar with the song, like that last oh, yeah. three minutes is heckers. Oh, and yeah. You've really yeah. got to hang on. You got to hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe Bill Burr is a big drummer too? Do you believe he has a theory or the relationship between drumming and and comedy and like you know timing yeah. and um, figuring it freaking out? Do you find that much relationship in your, in your? I mean, you've done comedy and you haven't played the drums barely at all. But, but you feel like there's a relationship there in any way? I believe it's intuitive. Yeah, I do. I believe that, yeah. you know, you got to, you got to, find, but I, I find like, I mean, again, real drumming is obviously a real skill and you have to really learn it like all music. But, it, uh, uh, but I, yeah, I, I think, is, does everyone feel this way about drumming that it seems like to be the easiest sport? It's like 10 pin bowling where you can for a moment be the best in the world. <laughs> if, you just get, if you get a strike yeah, of all yeah, the sports, sure. like you can't walk onto a cricket pitch and accidentally bowl at 150 Ks an hour. Yeah. Like right. you literally have to get good for that, but you can 10 pin bowl at an elite level for a moment. Like obviously the, the sport is doing it repeatedly, but for a second. Yeah. If there is, if there was an infinite amount of monkeys in a room, they would eventually become Buddy Rich. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> like it's, yeah. It it's yeah. definitely like, that was the main reason. I always had an interest in drumming and like, yeah, listening to a lot of music, I would always be like, I reckon I've figured out the drums to this. I reckon if I was in front of a kit, I'd just, I'd just know what I was doing. So I, I, I bought the kit because I essentially wanted to put it to the test. And Tom, you that. lived, uh, you lived in the room next to me when I, when I brought the drum kit home. So you can probably attest more than anyone. What was, what was my skills actually like? What were you hearing coming through the bedroom wall? <laughs> I was whenever, whenever I was hearing anything coming through the bedroom wall, it was definitely out of rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> It was a, just always a master at work. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, he's he's getting, a lot of put him tish. Yeah, a lot yeah, of put him tish. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's, do you know what I reckon? Do you reckon that the, now that I'm thinking about the false lure of the drums is? It's like we all love drumming on the desk when we hear a great rock song or whatever. Yep. And the, a desk and a, and, a, and a pen on a cup is like such a forgiving medium. And yeah. we hear yeah. what we want to hear. And we, we internally hear... The absolute best version of that. When you have a snare drum and a cymbal, it's very unforgiving. It's yeah. like extremely obvious that you're not doing <laughs> what you're what you're meant to that's, be doing. So that's that's funny. That's like saying you know where people say that that's why people sing in the shower because it's such great acoustics in the shower. If you could get a fucking drum kit in the shower, 
you would think you're Ringo Starr. You would think you're an absolute fucking killer in there. Yeah, I mean, that is, that's, I guess that's how that German thigh music began. But that's, 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 that, yeah, that's a heck of an instrument. Yeah. yeah I, I reckon that's good. But the piano, the piano I learned, piano I learned is hard. Like piano, you can't, you know, piano's tricky. It's really, and, and because your fingers too, Tom, like you would know, like you got to, it's so, you got to get your fingers so strong to like make all the different shapes. It's just. Tommy very... wouldn't know this. He literally never touched the fucking piano he had in his house. <laughs> He's actually He's learning gonna... from you right now. He can play bend folds though. All, all I could remember the whole time I was trying to learn this jazz song, because I thought it would be great to wow the family, was like, in the back of your head, you've got like 10,000 hours, 10,000 hours, 10,000 hours to master something. And you're like doing these annoying, like, eh, like you know, you're doing like three notes in a row. And I just keep looking over at the clock. It's been like eight minutes. And I'm like, yeah. oh, no. oh, this is taking ages. Why aren't I the best yet? <laughs> I, uh, similar to you with Ben Folds, Tom, I started playing bass when I was a teenager because I loved the band Jamiroquai and I wanted to learn those funky, those funky Jamiroquai bass rhythms. And I remember the other day, one time when I was at school, it was in year eight and I was listening to my discman and my friend walked into class and he went, what are you listening to? And I said, Jamiroquai. And he goes, why are you listening to the Jerry Maguire soundtrack? Which like, (laughs) not a burn that has aged well at all. Like someone telling me that chucking on the Jerry Maguire soundtrack now, I'd be like, yeah, man, that slaps. It's like, he thought the Jerry Maguire soundtrack was embarrassing. I was listening to something far more embarrassing. Like he, he, really, he, he missed an opportunity. But I mean, I, I guess in I guess in his head it was just like not only are you listening to the Jerry Maguire soundtrack, but you've invented like a cool, fun slang name for Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Like, <laughs> The Maraguay. Yeah. <laughs> You've j load Jerry Maguire. Yeah, the airy just gets in the way. I just want people to know this cool soundtrack I'm listening to. I was going to say, you know, for you, like a young, a young Tommy going, I want to be JK. Yep. And for all of us as kids wanting to be the musician that we idolise, like it's got to be one of the funnest pairings you can do because there's no there's no kid that was like oh you know I wanted to be Travis Scott or whatever and it's like oh yeah I could see that you're a cool kid yeah like you were always no <laughs> shot of being the person you idolized my brother and I'll throw him under the bus here my brother's is going to be the worst <laughs> because at least you're idolizing someone pretty cool my brother in 19 the early 90s was like they, at their high school, they could like pick an instrument to play. And based off what was on heavy rotation in our house, because that was like, you know, whatever mum and dad are listening to is what you're subjected to. My brother chose saxophone because of Kenny G. Oh, and wow. If you put Lachlan Blake next to Kenny G, despite the age difference of one being like a 13 year old and the other being like a 40 year old, there couldn't be two different more different dudes so yeah Yeah. and the sax the sax too you go through a big dip before you get to kenny g before you get to sexy level there is a lot of honking (laughs) the age where you just have the impulse to just be like a famous person that you like and think that you're pulling it off and think that it's cool it's like i'm fooling people into thinking i'm actually this guy i've somehow transferred the amount of cool that i think he has just because i've bought the same shoes that I saw him wearing in a video clip or whatever. Fuck. Totally, man. What's the, what's the I, oldest you can be and get away with that? Are there any like, you know, there well, I any... suppose we're still doing it. I suppose what we're describing is marketing. Yeah, <laughs> like, kind of. I guess <laughs> you're kind of doing any... a version of that at the moment, Carl. You're wearing a lot of, you've been wearing a lot of Liverpool stuff lately. That's been your big lockdown. Person. Yeah. That's probably yeah, but, closest but, it comes but, in adult form is like wearing sports kits, right? Yeah, like I was saying the True. other day, it's like I, I, I'm not even buying like the, the I'm not even buying the the uniform that the players play in anymore. I'm buying like the the stuff that the assistant youth team coach wears on the sidelines and stuff. Like, so is it more? Is that more like? Is that a more plausible fantasy for you? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, I can. Oh, definitely, I can see myself yelling at a lot of sixteen year olds for sure. Absolutely, I'm born to do that. <laughs> I'm dressing oh, up so like the type of coach? Gatorade that they pour on the ca- coach. Yeah, yeah. Are you? Yeah. Are you gonna? What's What's the fake name of your baby again? I forget. Blanket, blanket, blanket. When blanket yeah. grows up and maybe participates in some kind of team sports, are you gonna like take on the mantle of coaching? Because then you would be incredible. It's yeah. Look, it would be really interesting. It's it's definitely something I'd like to step back from myself and look at. I'm I'm keen to find out what happens to me 
in that mindset because <laughs> I'm bringing the ball over to the park at the moment and it's like, you know, all the playgrounds are like locked off at the moment. So it's like, all right, we're just bringing a soccer ball. And my two-year-old daughter is just learning how to play soccer now. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I'm already, I'm already bending her mind a certain way. But she's, <laughs> she's pretty good. Like, I, she's so good that I'm actually a little bit disappointed because I'm like, I might have to become this, this youth team coach that goes far. Oh, you, might have to become, you might have to become a pushy soccer dad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Okay, you yeah. have to get, like if if you buy mini witches hats before she's five and you're doing yeah. sprint drills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I've already got the outfit for it as well, so it's almost like, well, this would be a waste now. It'd be a waste if I didn't it's, do this. Yeah. It is cute as hell when look kids play soccer. My daughter goes to, well, before COVID shut everything down, but there's like yeah, kick kick a ruse. I think is the name of the soccer sport up here. So she's just turned four, but <clears throat> she did kick. She's doing kick a ruse as a three year old. And some days she's feeling it. And like, so they've got Coach Stu, who's like this English bloke who's great. And he like, you know, and you, it actually feels a bit more authentic because you've got an English Englishman like teaching these kids soccer and stuff. He's like, you know, get, you know, they're pretty attentive and stuff. And then some days it, she's just like, like one, one, I made the crucial error of like going, we're going to have a, um, we'll, we'll get like a mini cupcake after training. So like trying to get, you know, you like burn it and earn it. Like, yep. let's, yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, and then, but then once big, it's in her mind, mistake. it's like, yeah, exactly. I just say, I put, I, I was foolish. So put it in her mind and then she's like, let's have it now. I'm like, well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> it's not, it's not an upfront payment system. And then yeah. just melt down, melt down. Yep. And just like the, you know, this is, you, you run into this so many times, I reckon, with parenting where you're like gone to all this effort to get out the door, like getting out the door is so fucking hard. You make it all the way down to the field and then to see like a three-year-old just standing behind the soccer ball and kicking it with such little force that it <laughs> won't move the ball. <laughs> Everyone's like, come on, come on. And you're just like, well, this is, I'm not sure if, if this, if somehow then she's playing the, for the, the World Cup, I'll be like, well, I don't know, something happened because it was not there at the start. And then, yeah, then they, yeah. have to do, they have to do headers where they have to knock a ball off a witch's hat and she wears a cap, like part of the uniform is a hat when you play soccer <laughs> and again hitting it with such low force hitting it with the peak of her cap and it won't move the <laughs> soccer ball off of it just <laughs> it's it's intense we've, we've got it we've got an oval over the road from our house and so um that's our little uh, uh place for exercise and today i went over there um because my wife's working from home she's on a big conference call i get a phone call i'll generally like use that as my form of exercise so i've 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 got the headphones in i'm talking I go over there. There's a heap of people mucking around and whatever. And there's a tennis ball on the ground. And I was like, great. Love it. You know, you know, can't help myself to kick a ball around. Yeah. yeah free well, tennis, ball, tennis awesome. ball. Yeah, exactly. So I'm talking to my friend and just zigzagging around, kicking the ball around for, I reckon, three to four minutes. And then I sort of feel, and because I'm talking, I don't really realize what's going on. And finally, I, I feel someone grab me and I turn around and it's an old lady who wants the tennis ball back because she'd thrown it for the dog to get and I just started kicking around instead. So this woman with the dog's been following me around for three or four minutes. I just love that. You, I, I hope that you, for that three or four minutes, you were just like slightly out in front of her and she was at top speed and yeah, she couldn't yeah. like, she, yeah. she's doing like, she's doing yeah. knee mobility drills as well. Yeah. And <laughs> honestly, Honestly, I was way up the other end of the oval. Like I was at the other goals by then. And she's like trapped me nearly the whole oval over. <laughs> she found a free walking this? stick. Yeah. <laughs> What's the dog during, doing during this? Is the dog just chasing you? I know. Trying to get back in the mix? Well, that's, that's the thing I thought. Like, you know, like grow some balls, dog. You're like, you should be the one that comes and grabs the ball. Like you've got to get your mum to come and get the ball. <laughs> What are you training for? What are you training yeah. for every time you play fetch? This is yeah. it. This is, yeah. this is game day. Oh, Did you then do a shit and ask the old lady to pick it up with a plastic bag? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, that, it was that weird thing where it's like, you know, you're already in your own head and your own world because you've got the uh, headphones in and everything. And then there's the whole social distancing stuff at the moment. But this woman was clearly like had been talking to me or yelling at me or whatever and gone, no, actually, <laughs> fuck this. I'm 80, but I'm taking my chances with this guy and just grab me and like, give me the ball back. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, it's getting heavy. But that is it. I mean, I don't, I mean, just, I don't know about you or not, Carl, here, but don't you reckon that is one of the most beautiful things with kids? Like when the playground's closed, like so often you leave the house and you've got like 
I what I refer to as like you know you've got the dad plan, which is like guys, we're going to the park, we're taking the soccer ball, we're making goals. You know, this is what we're doing. But you get to the park, someone finds a stick, someone else is yeah. like, oh my god, a dirty cup. Yes, that's what we're doing. <laughs> You're like, oh, all right, that's what we're yeah. doing. Because really, when it comes down to it, like. You're just trying to kill an hour, and yeah. the, the, the kids don't care what they're playing with. They don't need a playground. That's just playgrounds are kind of just a lazy tool. For, well, not a lazy tool. They're like an easy tool for parents to go. We went to a place that you kind of enjoyed, but the kids just want to play anything and have you yeah. around. Yeah. But having said Love that, the idea of you walking past the playground and going amateurs, check them out. Lazy. My kids yeah, are yeah. Lazy. I'm, coming, I'm coming back at night and I'm cutting it down. Yeah. Well, that's at the moment. We've got a dirty like, cup and a syringe. Yeah, yeah. The, the real activity the playgrounds. Is the, <laughs> the, the playgrounds are, are closed at the moment, of course, in, in Melbourne at the moment, and so we've just got the park. So at the moment, my full time job is distracting my daughter from uh, the the existence of the playgrounds because it's quite hard to explain why that's, she can't get on tough. it. You know, she's she's two years old. So I went the, the other day with my wife on the weekend. What are you saying? I'm like, what's what's what well, are you going? Well, that's this is what's about to come up. So I was like, Dictate no, we can't Dan do doesn't that. want you to have fun, sweetheart. Now come on, <laughs> we're heading into. That's the- why I took you to the protest. That's why you got <laughs> sprayed, and that's why we're doing it again. <laughs> Look, but that was fun, wasn't love it? it. <laughs> yeah, you can see now it was only a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did that. I went over there. I'm trying to distract my daughter. I'm I'm there with my wife, and I'm like going, oh no, we'll kick the ball. We'll do this, and she kept going, no swings swings playground swings swings so i'm like okay but we can't go there we can't go there it's closed and she didn't really get it and so then we she just sort of marched away up there anyway so we're like okay well we'll just have to show her and so we get up there someone had actually pulled the fence off around the playground so then we i couldn't sort of go oh well, look it's closed <laughs> off you can't use it someone had already pulled it off and so i'm sitting there trying to explain trying to go oh how can i how can i explain to her that we can't use it and my wife just goes the playground's dead. And she's like, what, what? The playground went to a farm with other playgrounds. Yeah. It, just, yeah, it, she it, understands it, the concept of death? Yeah. No, because then, oh, yeah. Yeah, but then, then she's it's like, what's dead? Death. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, because yeah, the, the playground didn't eat its green pesto pasta. So now yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I told you last night. Yeah, the playground didn't finish its sh- shuttle runs after we kicked the ball. So yeah. now it's dead. The playground, now we- the playground doesn't think it needs to do ankle mobility. Yeah. And now it's dead. <laughs> the playground got AstraZeneca and got a blood clot. Yeah. <laughs> Just up one <laughs> leg of the swing set. <laughs> My, Man, but that's uh, the thing. Man, my kids are my kids are obsessed with death, you know, like or like love telling you about it. Like I got a seven and a four year old, and it's like, hey dad, you know, it's like like quite quite grim, confronting stuff to hear as a parent. Like, you know, like my little boy will go, like, Dad, unless unless something happens to me, you'll die a lot sooner than I will. Yeah. Like, wow. Well, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh just like playing the numbers, that's true. <laughs> it's really like, you know, not, not not for a very long time. He goes, not that long, about 80. <laughs> <laughs> Please like, stop playing that electronic drum kit. You don't have long left. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I play with metal sticks on exposed wires. And so then, then, then my my daughter, like we drive past a cemetery like near our house, and then my daughter's always like Hey, Dad, when I'm a grandma, I have to go in there and get in a grave. Like, <laughs> oh, like, like, like old people turn themselves in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Have you got an open plot? I think it's yeah, time. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll keep as you. soon as your child yeah. has a child too, just immediately. Yeah, exactly. Like the baby yeah, comes yeah, out yeah. and you got to go straight oh down. Oh, my there. God, honey, I'm so one happy. One out. I'm so oh. happy for you. I mean, obviously, devastating news for me, but you're going to be a great mum. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, yeah. I'm off uh, I'm off to the cemetery. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea of, like, going past and going, any any vacancies this week? No. Oh. Oh, and just slowly, <laughs> sadly walking away. I don't get to be dead. Damn. Yeah. I'll try. I'll come back next week. I'm like a, a benevolent, a, a benevolent cemetery guard being like, I think you've still got some life in you, Bethel. <laughs> no, come on. We know the rules. Put me in. <laughs> I've had a good time. I think you still seem vibrant. You still contribute. No, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't have thought so. It was because uh... your daughter's name is Ethel, right? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> It was my girlfriend's birthday on to. Friday and her uh, her sister came over with her nephew who's nearly three 
and he's just started, he's just getting around full sentences. And one of the few full sentences he can speak now, which he, we went for a little walk. Like he, he came around the, they came around for a little walk around the block with us. And he's just, this kid nonstop is just going, I want to go home. I want to go home. Just like (laughs) pretty much the only full sentence he's got access to. And he's just given it a red hot crack. And then it's like, they, they do any full tantrum. They end up leaving. And then within like an hour, there's the announcement that, um, you know, childcare is closing down here. It's like, well, be careful what you wish for, brother. <laughs> there's, a of, there's a whole lot of being at home going on now, isn't there? <laughs> Man, how smart are kids? Because yeah. that is basically all of our internal monologue. But as we get older, we just have to yeah. shove it in salt. Yeah. yeah. It's like he knew the closure was coming. It's like the vultures circling around a dead body in the desert, just like, I want to go home. I want to go home. It's like <laughs> this little this baby knows something that the rest of us don't. He can, he can Dude, sense you, it in the air. Where have you been for the past 18 months? Like we've been home. Yeah. We get it. <laughs> yeah. I feel we've seen it. You didn't see it? We yeah. should have seen it. <laughs> how, how, how are you explaining you the oh sorry? You go. Edit point. How are you explaining the pandemic to your, your children, Hamish? How are you sort of explaining it we, out? To them? It's been funny because, like, you know, it started 18 months ago. So when it began, like, my little girl was two, turning three, and now she's four. So it's sort of like yeah. she's 50% of her life has been in the pandemic and a large and chunk of her life that she remembers is yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. has been this scenario. So in, in, in some ways, I suppose, like, for kids that age, that's, there's a sadness to that. But then in another way, it's sort of like, well, it's not like, it's not like she's got you know, 20 years of like running around, yeah. having total, traveling into state and doing whatever you want and partying. So it's not, like, she knows, it's not like she's traveled. It's not like she's got a very strong love for a, a country in Southeast Asia that she can't wait to get back to. And That's true. She doesn't have government a deep, deep banning her from doing that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. She's not, she's, she's not investigating like, you know, <laughs> how much would it cost for Elon Musk to build me a tunnel to Kosamu? <laughs> <laughs> just on a giant sled underground yeah. in a bin, she's not googling bin, things bin, like bin, that she's, she's, bin she's not, letting a boner just yeah. to <laughs> she's not googling things like that when everyone else goes to bed from 10 30 p.m till midnight every single night so yeah she's lucky she's one of the lucky ones just <laughs> saying to herself way. i want to go home i want to go home <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, we, like, early days, like, when it, when it happened, we kind of made it a, tried to make it kind of a fun thing because we were like, you know, if you have the supermarket with us, guys, like, you can't touch anything. And, like, the reason we're wearing masks is we would always just, no, it wasn't a conscious thing, but, like, between my wife and I, we'd always refer to it, like, with wiggly fingers as the virus. And it became, like, a kind of a joke that we had to kind of do this stuff because of the virus. Mm-hmm. And just to keep the vibe up, I guess, at home. But... You know, I got a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. Like, their world, we're super fortunate. I mean, I, I'd be the first to say we're fortunate in a lot of ways. And and one of them is that the kids are at that age where it's like, again, it, it, different to if you're like 16 or whatever. But when you're a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, like, your world is the house anyway. It's like your mum and your mm-hmm. dad, your toys. you Like, you know, they're in the same bedroom. It's like every day is another weird, you know, like something is you know you're obsessed with being an arctic fox and hiding under the bed and yeah, yeah i'm, yeah, I'm sure. always a slow herbivore unfortunately in these <laughs> and, um, i always get given my character which is oh, a, wow. slow herb, a, a slow herbivore with bad eyesight um <laughs> so I'm, I'm like easily hunted in the in the hallway it's, so so uh, you know like they kind of get that stuff's going on but but that, well, but they like my little boy fully understands. But he's he's been uh, at no no point does he complain. But it's shitty. For I think the shittiness is happening at a level that they, they can't deal with. And I'm I can't really speak to kids of another age, but I'm sure it's happening. The higher you get up, the more yeah. it's like mm. this is not a natural way for human beings to be. Like Zoom is useless for school stuff. Certainly with seven year olds, like all they do is they just sit on there changing their backgrounds and their filters. <laughs> and it just teaches you how to be bored on Zoom. So yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm lucky at the moment, like I'm not working too much, like Zoe's working, but I can be with the kids. And like, honestly, my, honestly, my goal every day is just keep the vibe up. Try, like try, create something different. 
whatever it is. I, I honestly feel, I feel like that to this Sydney lockdown's been what however long it's been going on, eight or nine or ten weeks or something. It feels like an open mic night where you got up with eight minutes of material and you've been on stage for ten weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd work is really wearing thin. Yeah, oh, right. well, so any, also, any, anyone else here from number eight? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Open mic nights, typically you get in a five minute set. So you're getting up there with eight minutes of material you've already. Yeah, I, 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 thought I'd, I thought it'd be sweet. Even if it ran over, I got three extra minutes. But now <laughs> as we move into week eight, a yeah. lot of, ah, oh, so what else is funny? Speaking of that, man, this is, this is what I did on the weekend. So, as time of recording, there was the, there was a protest, there was a march, you know, uh, what do those people call themselves, you know, um, anti-lockdown protesters, um, dumb fucks. So um, now is what I do find interesting is there is a sub section in Melbourne and probably in Sydney of like um, dumbass open mic comedians who are now into this sort of stuff. And so when I saw the protests happening, I was like, Oh, I, I remember one of these guys that's like right into it. And he, I think he got his head on like the front of the paper, you know, getting stepped on by a horse or something like that in one of these previous protests. And, and like, instead of being like really embarrassed, the sort of guy that obviously puts it up on social media and goes, check this out, check, check out me being kicked in the balls by a policeman. And it's like, yes. I'm like, you fucking idiot. So anyway, is, I've gone straight on. You've got to give credit to those kinds of protests. It doesn't matter how much they get owned by, the security yeah. forces and the police presence at the protests. They're not shying away from it. They're more than happy to just share that around on the socials. Like, I mean, take I it think, a huge it, L, it, doesn't matter. It used to be that turning up to a protest, like with a GoPro or whatever, and was to like catalog police brutality or whatever. I mean, I think that like, I remember early days, it was like, you know, we're filming you, so you can't, yeah. you know, don't think you're getting away with anything. I don't get that vibe anymore. I just feel like everyone in the crowd is like content creating. Like they're yeah, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just, all just getting like trying to get like killer angles and stuff. This is not to like in case it's ever needed for evidence. This is a hundred percent because yeah. like they're like already going. I've got exactly the song I'm putting under this. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot more selfies than body cams, isn't there? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Seems that way. Just bought yeah. So we've got to test it out somehow. Fly over. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> So what do we thought, want? Like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought of this guy, I thought of one of these guys, I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll go down the rabbit hole of their, their social media updates. And so, of course, this guy's very pro, you know, oh, this is going to be great and whatever. And, and I went down, uh, I, I scrolled down his feed. And then, you know, from a couple of weeks ago, he, it's just all anti-government, all anti-lockdown, all anti-virus. And then just in the middle of all of it comes this, I check out my new stand-up comedy special I've recorded. And I'm like, well, I'm absolutely going to have a look at this then. Mm -hmm. And just pick that, that needle out of the haystack and start watching it. And this guy had just, now when he said, I've recorded a new stand-up comedy special, I've seen all of those words. Technically those words are sort of correct, but what he'd actually done was, what he'd appeared to have done was maybe broken into a an abandoned house and then filmed himself in complete darkness while he's drinking a beer on his own iPhone, <laughs> lit up by the light on his own iPhone. Great. Yep. And he just he talked into it for 35 minutes. And I was like, this is an in like now when he said it was a comedy special, I'm like, great. I start watching it. It's like, all right, he's just warming the crowd up at this point. You know, the first five minutes has been there's been a lot of ranting. There's been a lot of threats to kill policemen. Um, there's been a lot of anti-government <laughs> sort of propaganda. But this is just this is just crowd work to warm it up. So I'm like, I'm go I set myself the target. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to keep watching until comedy material comes up. Like I'm keen to see what alt right anti virus actual comedy material sounds like. So then I had to just keep watching it, and I got like 15 minutes in, and I'm like, I don't think we're going to get there. And then he said something. He said like a four word joke, like a one liner, and I'm like, that's actually sort of funny. And then he immediately goes, yeah, I'm like, bang, he's got one. I can stop watching. And then he goes, oh, hang on. And he says to the camera, oh, hang on. We can't count that one. Um, I have to give credit. I've actually stolen that from Rodney Rood. <laughs> 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 so this guy, I watched the rest of this guy has done a comedy special with, not, with only one joke in it, and it's Rodney Rood's. <laughs> what's, the, what's the 
what's the Rodney Roode bit that's able to pass as Man, a... Uh, honestly, I, I oh, can't probably remember. 80, I can, 80% of it. <laughs> <laughs> true, yeah. I, can't, I can't remember it. I can tell you all about, like, you know, the, the shape-shifting lizards that are working in the uh, yeah. Victorian police, but I can't remember the four-word joke that Rodney Roode has been stolen from. Fuck. Oh, man. That's awesome. Far out. Poor Rodney. I would love to yeah. see more professional <laughs> comedy specials where it's just, like, midway through... Yeah, Bill Burr's accidentally whipping one out and then being like to camera, like, oh, no, sorry, that's Seinfeld. Fuck. That, oh, it's so embarrassing. Yeah, I, knew, I, knew, I knew that rolled off the tongue a little easy. But yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, that's the 12th man. Sorry, As guys. I said it, I yeah. thought it sounded familiar. I thought it sounded familiar because it was something that I'd cooked up in my own brain. But no, it's um, it's the monologue from the start of uh, the, uh, the car park episode of Seinfeld. Fuck, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I would like to see Rodney Rude taking this guy to court, though. The this thing that you've stolen my joke, you've put it in. I know it's in your new special, but to be fair, it's got four views, mm-hmm. and you've drunken four beers while you're while you're recording it as well. Uh, just a, I love that he's just done a light B and E and decided like that. That's that's going to be the setting. Like, yeah, I'm just going yeah. to bust into a house. Here. Yeah. <laughs> 35 minutes too, like calling it a special when you're barely breaking the 30 minute mark is pretty awesome. Yeah. Also, <laughs> oh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the only, I don't remember the, the, the gag he, he ripped from Rodney Rude, but uh, maybe there's more jokes. If you count these two sentences that he said within three yep. minutes or so of those, um, I think Mussolini didn't go hard enough. And Hitler okay. had the right idea. So okay. maybe yeah. you can, I, I don't know, maybe they were from Rodney Roode as well. I'm not sure, but he didn't attribute them to Rodney Roode. So, oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's a can of Gadsby, both of those, I think. <laughs> 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 that's, that's in Douglas. A lot of people know that. Yeah, yeah classic. That's the B side. You've got to watch yeah. the extended. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what is shit. it? Do you think he's like a Joe Rogany kind of guy, like all those young open micers who who who, who sign up to that kind of world of of? Um, uh, I think something has gone terribly wrong writing. in his life. I think that's <laughs> to be honest. The guy that I've seen, the, the, this guy, he I, he started comedy at about the same time I did, and look, it, it hasn't gone perfectly for either of us. But he's gone down <laughs> one rabbit hole. I've I've managed to at least. Stop the temptation of going completely fucking batshit crazy. So I yeah. think I should get a few points for that. You, you're not yeah. attending protests on your publicity to a few comedy special. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> you've still got other outlets of publicity that you can you can do. Yeah, yeah. And, at the, at the, and you at prefer the, the, the ideology least... of Duterte, for example. Yeah, you're different. Yeah. And at least my man, my crazy manifestos are well lit. Like I'm not right. using just the light off the yeah. iPhone. Your background looks deranged yeah. in the Zoom window at the moment, but at least that's your own house. Like you're not squatting yes. somewhere to, to do this. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got the I've got the like... power on in my special filming. Yeah. 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 I was thinking comedians are at high risk of being radicalized in this scenario when the future is so uncertain. And like, if you were, and you've talked about people leaving comedy as a, as a result of the pandemic before, right? Because like just thinking about how the fuck is it going to work again and how, how would they do that? So if you were doing comedy for a long time and had to give it up at this point, like you would go a little bit fucking insane. Cause like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Retraining, yeah. going back to uni is extremely expensive. Yeah. Like how do you reorient your life at this point? I think about this. Um, you know, I think about this all the time. About right? like, you know, like if this if this slid into full apocalypse, right? Yes. I I constantly look at myself and go, so what do you? How do you feel, yeah. champ? In the apocalypse, <laughs> yeah. like what are you doing? And literally, like you know, usually my answer is not not a lot. Like I don't have a lot of good skills to give the You're tribe. You're a herbivore. Like, even, yeah. even yeah. sewing. <laughs> Even, even like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fairly good character actor if I have to be a slow moving herbivore. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, like, should should the tribe wish to eat me? I have practiced being easily hunted, easily yeah. huntable. <laughs> but then the other day, I gave my seven year old a haircut, and my little boy a haircut. I was like, "That's it, you know." He's, he's, he's like, "So, so he's like, shave his head." My my wife's like, "You know, just shave it." I was like, "No, no, come on, let's." At least have a go giving him a short back oh, and sides. And you're, you're tre- <laughs> hang on, you're treating your son's head like the drums. You're like, I reckon I can feel this out. <laughs> I can buy this out. I've always had yeah. fairly good natural hairdressing <laughs> p- percussion instincts. So I was like, come on, let me have a go. And, I, and, and you do, you look at YouTube videos for like, you know, young boys' haircuts, and it is all a version of the same lady from like the Midwest of America who's like got a YouTube channel about kids' hairdressing. So they're like, you know, you're just just a lot of like 
you know, I'm going to show you the easiest boys haircut and they're just doing it on their own kid who's like a bit sick of being mum's like YouTube prop. And it's tough and you need a spray bottle and a comb and a few things that I didn't have. But I kind of got there in the end. Like I shaved the base and then it's about blending the top. There's like a thing you got to... Oh, you know, you, you're when blending. You, get, you know, you go to the hairdressers and they hold it between their fingers. Yeah. That's a, yeah. There's a reason they do that, I'm learning. <laughs> and so you're learning like cutting down and blending it in and all this. And it was like, it was not terrible. It was okay. Like the standard photo, I suppose, is like, uh-oh, dad gave the kid a haircut and looks like a piece of shit. It was fine. It was like B plus. It wasn't amazing, right. but it was yep. fine. And it was kind of blended. And it was the first moment that I went, maybe I maybe I could survive the apocalypse. Yep. Like maybe. <laughs> Great. Maybe I've, got, I've, I've done one boy's haircut, but yeah. now at least I'm off, I'm off a duck. So like, I yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, have no yeah. skills. I don't have no so, skills. Like it was, so a, it, you're, was you're, it was a sloppy single, but I've run one run yeah. and I'm off zero. The so hairdresser is like 1% higher than comedian. Comedian in the apocalypse is zero percent. Hairdressers mm. one to two percent. Something, something. Yeah. And and like yeah. you know, if if it was sort of like okay, you know, there's like sixty of us have managed to escape to some sort of enclave. We're barricaded in, and the alphas going around going like, right, what can you do? I probably would put my hand up and just be like, kids' haircuts. And yeah. then he's like, well, <laughs> we've already got someone that can do haircuts and sewing. Yeah. Then I'd yeah. have to lie and go, okay, I can actually, I can do haircuts and some blacksmithing. Drumming, yeah. just yeah. just go. Fuck! I really hope I don't have to make a horseshoe soon. <laughs> there was a, uh, there was a tweet any fan of Charlie yeah. Brown at, yeah, at all? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone like the first six to six seconds of the Charlie Brown song? <laughs> there was a tweet last year as it was all kicking off about um, that that I think about so regularly of someone being like, you know, everyone's buying sourdough kits to keep themselves busy, but we have to think about the bakers because if everyone learns how to make their own sourdough in lockdown. Bakers are going to be out of yeah. work when we're out of the lockdown. It's like no one had that same concern about hairdressers. Like, guys, if you have a mental breakdown and start shaving your head in front of the mirror, hairdressers are going to be out of work on the other side yeah. of this thing. And, and, here's, and here's the thing. If anything, having a go at making your own sourdough just rams home like, holy shit, I can't believe you could buy a finished one of these for $4.20. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. This took all fucking day, cost $100 in ingredients, the kitchen's destroyed. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe you can buy the finished product for $4.20. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they sell it where I get the milk. Fuck. Yeah. I'll just get it while I'm there. I can't believe how good that is. <laughs> it's like making your own pasta from scratch. I don't know if you've ever done that. It's a fun activity. Oh, yeah. It eats up it's a whole fun. day. But at the end of it, you're like, well, that was a fun day, but we'll never need to do that again. Like, there's no. <laughs> <laughs> and there's absolutely no way to be. Yeah, we made, like, the one time we had a go at it was too, like, it. The bit, the, the you know, I borrowed, went and borrowed a mate's pasta press kind of thing because I'm like, I know what, I, I'm not dumb enough to buy one, even though that like feels very like the kind of thing I would do yep. is to just go and buy a pasta press. <laughs> I, it came out wet, like it's like there's like t- 10 holes or whatever the spaghetti's meant to come out, it came out wet. So we just basically, after all that, just got like churros. <laughs> just coming out there, like just like pasta churros. Yep. And sausage, I went, yep. This isn't working, guys. And uh, we had macaroni. <laughs> we have. Oh, lost, no. We have did, we lost lose, did we lose Carlos? We have lost space in the wedding. Had a walkout. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. <I'm> back. <laughs> Guess what? I'm Brutal. back. He's back. I, uh, hey. There's been a bit too much internet being used in my apartment. Don't worry. I've gone out and I've told my wife to get off the conference call with several <laughs> heads of airlines around the world. I said, Mom, I'm doing a podcast. So now, yeah. I'm doing my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well yeah hell. i mentioned uh, i mentioned before that um it was uh it was my girlfriend's birthday over the weekend and uh this this we were meant to be out of lockdown here in melbourne by then so all of a sudden you know we get extended and then i'm kind of scrambling to get gifts and stuff and deal with the postage and i had a couple of things that uh didn't quite turn up in time it was very devastating but then i i remembered what i what i should have just done i remembered this from um so my partner is from perth and we were back there over Christmas, um, staying with her mum. And uh, her mum just kind of casually, as we're walking around the house, uh, drops this little tidbit, goes, hey, has, um, has she told you about uh, 
how she was a she's a massive massive Hamish and Andy fan and um oh. went to, uh, went to meet them at a shopping center when they did a signing. Do you do you know them? Could you pass that on? And my girlfriend just hating it, just <laughs> screaming <laughs> from the corner of the room like, do not do not tell him this. So yeah, I just remembered that the other day that like fuck none of my I I ordered her a cameo that has not shown up yet from a Real Housewife that she's a fan of. Like, <laughs> should have gotten the great man H Blake to do a uh, to do a shopping center signing style. Uh, <laughs> love, love nothing more. I'm so glad we 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 released two CDs, I think, and and a couple of DVDs. I'm just so glad for whatever else you know I may or may not get to experience while I'm lucky enough to be in the entertainment industry. I'm just stoked I managed to catch the tail end of CD signings. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dress like table we, in we, the we, just yeah, oh, like hundred <laughs> percent. Like we were the last wave of like just within the last few months, I reckon, of that being a thing where you could roll like we released a CD. We released a CD and it sold like a lot. Like I can't, I can't like it's not like whatever it was, I don't know, 70,000 copies or something yeah. of CD of a CD. Yeah. It was yeah. essentially just good bits from the right, like the bits we chose from the radio show that like it was just pre-podcasting. Yeah. yeah, unbelievable that that existed, and that you would go and like sign your name on the CD cover and like give it back to people, and that that would <laughs> that would that like constituted something that was worthwhile doing for a day. Very yeah. fun. Yeah, I've it's been... it's a lot harder to sign Spotify these yeah. days. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's gone. Sign the pa- Patreon receipts. Yeah. Where, like, <laughs> we, I remember like, and there was like big politics. You're like, you've got to, you've got to do sanity at this Westfield, and like. JB are going to fucking lose it if you don't. Oh, you know, really? Have the trestle table. Me, JB, and <laughs> I, I. One of the very first things I ever did was MC when I worked for Fox FM in Melbourne, like, like as a behind the scenes dude. I they needed someone to MC Delta Goodrum's Innocent Eyes. Was that her album or something? Like her yep. first yeah, album. Yeah. They needed to MC an album signing, and I went to High Point and. MC'd like just was like you know hey guys here she's 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 out the back she's coming out and Delta came out and it was a seven hour queue they were like wow. we started at midday and there were still people like queued outside of High Point like at six o'clock at night like the shopping center shut and Delta was like I'm I'm doing I'm I'm staying here till the very last fan and were and- you still MC? No, it's just like oh. dead on the stage, just with a yeah. camel back. Yeah. <laughs> I've like wandered. i like wandered. You're, you're off. up there going, like, "Oh, hang on, hang on." That was Rodney Roode's joke, actually. That was Rodney Roode. So, yeah, sorry. Actually, actually, sorry. Yeah, this that was that was that was a joke Stigma Rebo used when he was MC. <laughs> so I mean, I remember saying, "I'm in a state of the end," and then I was like. I, I can't. I didn't stay. I read about it in the paper that she stayed. Like the, the shopping center shut it down. You had to read about it in the paper. You didn't even have anyone on the internet that could have passed that along direct. You had to wait for. The- I remember. <laughs> I, I think I read about it in in confidential. Went back when that was called the Eye. In the oh Hills. yeah. Oh <laughs> wow. Yeah yeah. yeah. Newy yeah. Tacoa with the hot scoop about Delta's <laughs> yes. seven hour yes. signing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have an MC for your one or you you guys are just out there handling it all yourselves? Uh good question. No, we did. We we had some good we that always, was a turn. Was always, Delta was yeah. MCing by then. Yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was always, it was always like a Black Thunder pilot kind of thing, which was and then the whole time it was just us going, like, come on, like, you know, because we were like, we're here for two hours, like it's great, but when you know. It's and it's not like we're it's not like you're super popular. It's just that people are fucking bored at shopping centers, so right, yeah. people will be like, "Eh, I'll, I'll line up." So by the end of the queue, just keep people being like, "Um, can you sign this lunchbox? Can you sign my <laughs> shoes?" Yeah. And yeah. then you're like, hey, "You're hating this. We're bored. We want to go. You don't really know who we are. Like this, the the value add for the fans finished hours ago. Right, like, right. Like, let's let's just wrap this up. So you always have to like put someone in the back of the queue to like be the be you know kind of like at the supermarket on the conveyor belt you need to put your divider in oh yeah and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and let them kind of like finish out the queue that's yeah that's right. the one thing i remember from those yeah, yeah. nice i wonder if they're ever <laughs> what about you what about you ballard in lockdown so this is the, going into lockdown you you've been working on a book for a long time and all of a sudden 
you're stuck with nothing to do but finish this fucking book. Are you going, mm-hmm. what was his name, Sam Torrance in, in The Shining? Surely you're... <laughs> what, All what, work, what, no play. Yeah, exactly. You must be. This is, this is perfect for you to finish this book you've been working on for about a year or something. How's it, is this is, it, is, this, is this how's it going is this good or is this bad what what situation are you in you'd think it'd be good but it's been very bad i've been reading a lot of articles about how lockdown's bad for concentration <laughs> that's what i've been doing to procrastinate <laughs> writing my book is all these articles <laughs> explaining how it's bad for your brain it's actually it's actually really hard yeah. to um read it but no i've watched game of thrones again that's been pretty good oh, man. Yeah. Um, we just started we just started again it's a wonderful program and I highly recommend it, but no, I really, I really should get onto it uh, and finish that book because it's, can I ask what the book's about? It's about every problem in society and the neoliberal term of the 1980s, which fundamentally destroyed the political economic status quo no, no, and no. destroyed no, my I generation's think, future prospects. I think it's about That's not a Rodney Roo joke, is it? <laughs> Bob Ballard's new book, Frog Sack, coming out soon. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> funny buggers coming out so um yes it's it's about it's it's both a memoir of my entire life and then almost every major social political issue trying uh, to both explain it in an interesting way and make that funny i like the idea that you've got writer's block and it's a memoir no, i'm really stuck about what happened to me at age 14 i can't think of something good <laughs> are you doing that we, um, we, are, you, are you doing we, that we like back and... sorry you go sorry tell me you go uh, I was just going to say, are you doing that elite level procrastinating where it's like you're, you're sitting through Game of Thrones, but you're still convincing yourself? It's like, no, this is kind of relevant to the book. I could, I could kind of thread these themes through. This is relevant. This feeds in. I so many breaks, you, know? you need to give yourself a break, Tom. You need to record I the Dum Dum Club. You need to give your are... brain a break and do Dum Dum. <laughs> I mean, the constant, the constant monologue of going. I really should do that thing I need to do. And then your brain going, well, you can't work when you're not happy. And yeah. <laughs> like the fact, the fact that I'm in charge of me is a terrible setup yeah. because awful. I awful. wish someone else was in charge of me because like I'm very lenient to me. I've got a bit of a soft spot. <laughs> I've got, got, got a huge soft spot for myself. There's a bit of nepotism then, going so, on here. There's a fuckload <laughs> yeah. of nepotism and narcissism going on. So yeah. when my when I go, you know what, you know what? I think I need to buy some mountain bike pedals. Mm. My brain goes, <laughs> I think you do too. I think that's what's yeah. stopping you from being happy. And then once you've bought those, you'll be happy and you can do some amazing work. And it wasn't, turns out it wasn't what I needed. I needed shorts. So now I've got to look for those. <laughs> Tom, can I, can I be in your book? Can, you, can I be a character in your book? Yeah, you're one of the massive um, societal problems. <laughs> <laughs> more of a theme housing wealth inequality <laughs> chandler <Yeah. laughs> these are the a issues big photo in facing a little glossy picture insert in the middle of the book <laughs> yeah i want to be can i be a footnote can i can i be a footnote somewhere yeah sure you can be yeah. in there i nice, nice, promise, promise. Nice, nice promise for a book that hasn't been written and it's like <laughs> sure man you can fuck i don't know you can be the pop-up section footnotes. Yeah. Start with the footnotes backwards yeah. from there. Exactly. <laughs> Work out exactly. the shit you want really you. tiny on the bottom of the page and then the, yeah. the bigger words will flow from there. Yeah, reverse engineer yeah. why I'm in your book. There's an idea <laughs> right there. Sure. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of Game of Thrones, this is like my winds of winter shit. I've been working on it for, for fucking yeah. ages. It's never going to be finished. But I would just, well, I just wrote about... Sorry. Go, Tommy. No. Uh, I got nothing. Go. Well, it was, it was not this one. Oh, don't get excited. Uh, I mean, we literally have just come back to like, my wife's never watched Game of Thrones. So we're on, you know, season one, episode two tonight. Like, I'm starting again. And there's a kind of like a thrill in that too, because you're like, wow, oh, that's really taken away the question of what are we going to watch? Because it's right. like, that is a huge amount in the torpedo tubes now for the next month or two. Yeah. But what are you guys watching like? Is anything? Have you gone back to anything apart from Game of Thrones, or have you discovered anything great? Uh, uh, I'm, look, I, I'm I'm very rare with watching shows. My my wife goes to bed and watches shows, and I just can't be bothered getting into it. But having said this, I've said this on the show. I'm like, what are you wasting your time watching Kardashians and watching Real Housewives? Whereas I'm watching an hour or two of either 
webcams from Thailand or okay, now amateur yeah. vlo- amateur vloggers that are walking around different beaches going, <laughs> oh, the water's pretty blue at this one. Let's check out the next beach. Yeah, pretty blue here as well. <laughs> oh, all the hotels are closed. Why don't I check this hotel? Yeah, that one's closed as well. And I'm like, I can't get enough, to be honest. I just keep going back to the well. <laughs> okay, well, I'll float that with my wife. I <laughs> may need a backup. We were yeah. watching a There's lot a lot of, to uh, binge. You're in there for a lot. If you if you make the call, if you put the first <laughs> toe in the water, you're there for quite a while. Yeah. It's not one of these things that takes a while to build up. It's it's as good as it's gonna get yeah. from minute yeah. one of episode one. There's no slow burn. <laughs> Man, honestly, I got I got I was talking to a friend of the show, Milan, our friend Milan, uh, the other day, and I actually got I've got someone hooked on it now because I've now got Milan ringing me and saying, Oh, I'm, 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 I got three hours into that vlog you recommended to me and we're now having full adult conversations about him going, what did you think about that sandwich he was eating on that episode last week? I was like, yeah, I would have bought one of those sandwiches. That looks, <laughs> if we ever go back to Thailand, we should go and get one of those sandwiches. They look pretty good. Oh, boy. I, yeah. Hamish, in answer to your question, uh, the Melbourne International Film Festival has been on and they've had their, they've pivoted yeah, their whole program to being uh, on, on, like on demand online. So we were watching a few films from that. And then Saturday we'd rented one and we're about halfway through it, this very intense uh, like Danish film. And unbeknownst to my girlfriend, I had eaten a fair amount of weed butter late in the afternoon that then started kicking in <laughs> midway through this like intense thriller. And I could not focus on the movie anymore. So I made her turn it off. And so we could put on the Ali G movie. And yeah, it was, that. <laughs> it was, yeah, there, some big chats had to be had in this house on Sunday morning about my conduct and about my <laughs> insistence on watching a movie that is, with the passage of time, very homophobic now. Lots of, uh, <laughs> she'd never seen it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think she wishes that it, things had stayed that way because I think she had a great time watching it. <laughs> <laughs> just with anything with edibles, it's all about timing, Absolutely. and it's all about it's all about everyone on the train having the same number of tickets for the yeah, train. Absolutely. <laughs> otherwise, the carriages can separate. <laughs> Me not only slapping my own thigh, but slapping her leg, just going like, "God, it's good stuff, isn't it?" He called the kid a no. boy. Oh yes. <laughs> when when you like you know talking about like you know like hit comedies of the thousands that are that are still hanging around i mean i don't know if you guys have, i don't know if this is out or not but i saw an ad online the other day for like jackass's new movie like jackass like they're going again and like yeah, they're old know. dudes now they're like yeah. 50 and my internal model i was like oh man guys fuck okay like you were heroes to us 20 years ago but really like you're still doing this then like two sketches in i was like this is pretty fucking funny. I will watch yeah. this. This is, good. this is good. This is yeah. good, guys. Good to have you there. Several, several conversations about I hope I hope we're allowed out of the house soon and Jackass is in the cinema. Oh, I, yeah. There's been several conversations among like, the media. I, I just was like so ready to just be like, oh, you sad. Like, what a sad, sad catch grab. And like, they look good. They still got it. They yeah, still, still got, got it. Like, from the, from the, from oh, the trailer, wow. I'm like, I'm pretty excited yeah. about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, despite the fact they've got, they're a bit graying at the temples, they can still get kicked in the head by a horse with the best of them. So <laughs> much. Like, so, I actually think it's like way more impressive if you're a 50 year old. Yeah. Like, just knowing how sore I am as a 39 year old. If you're a 50 year old, just with the aches and pains of life, like just doing normal stuff is jackass enough for me. Like, yeah, picking yeah. up a kid with one arm without really bending yeah. your knees. <laughs> like, that's impressive. Um, hey before we wrap up i just want to bring up one last thing quickly hamish we talked about this last week but i have uh speaking of cameo before i have a cameo account um that's called the bad impressionist where my my angle awesome. is that i do i do bad impressions for people so you know i don't really have to feel too you know, I don't have to feel yeah, too to dodgy feel about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, 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 oh, well, but, you, you only feel pressure if you're actually nailing it. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I literally I'll get halfway through one and go, I, I got to start this again because I'm doing it too well and I don't want to be taken. <laughs> with the this, this, this. this possibly could be the best Frank Spencer anyone's ever done. I've got to start again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got a I've got a couple of them to get through. Um, so I thought I'd, awesome. I've I've actually gotten a couple of good ones just in the last 24 hours. So I thought um, I haven't sent these off yet. I could kind of practice them and maybe get some feedback uh, from you. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. What do you, yeah, do love you think? Yeah, love it. Great. Happy to, happy is, the happy idea, is the idea is the is the idea here that you're gonna do the impression, then I have to guess who it is oh. or who it isn't? Oh. Oh. Uh, no, I think we'll no, actually, over, and we've already gone over time. I think I'll. All right, you go. You, I'll, you, I'll, you tell me who it is. Yeah, I'll just yeah. tell you if you failed adequately. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, all right. So this one, I quite like this one. This is um, Pauline Hanson giving a speech after she's just joined the Greens. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is a request that someone had. Okay. Yeah. And key, and did I mention that the account is called the Bad Impressionist? So. Oh right. Yes. So right. yeah, okay. don't. Um, so this is the best you can possibly this do. Is the best okay, I can we possibly get it. Do. Yeah, this is me trying yeah. at one hundred and ten percent capacity. Right. Um, all right. Um, um, all right. Uh, I I I don't like it. Uh, I I don't like it that the climate change is uh, happening and it's it's really bad and. Uh, Yes, that's what I have to say to climate change is that I don't like it. What do you think? Pauline Hansen, having just joined the uh, room, that's her speech. She's it's pretty good. In, like, you know, and pretty good in the sense that, you know, well, it's pretty good in whichever way you want to take it. That's the beauty of this segment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's accurate, but I didn't really enjoy it. So, yeah, it's like you've done a good job either way, I guess. <laughs> you, you've played, you've, you've absolutely positioned yourself marvellously here because, yeah. like, no matter how badly we tried to burn you, yeah. it's like, it, that, uh, it's a win. No, it's still, yeah. I mean, I, I set up last week that I was going to have a crack at these this week before we knew that you were going to be on the show, Hamish. And I think it'll be good in this household now that now there's someone that has a more embarrassing interaction with you over my girlfriend <laughs> at the shopping center. So this is really just, this is my gift for her. It's like, you don't have right. to feel. <laughs> right. This is like, just roll up, roll up and watch a man step over an extraordinarily low bar. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, this, is, this is at the circus. This is a new act called the bearded man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess yeah. that's what it says on the box. This is yeah. uh, this is me um, okay. for that new Channel Ten show. Thank God you're here. But now, can you please fuck off because you're ruining the party? <laughs> um, and do you have any more this week? Who else have we got? All right, I've got one more. I've got one more that I wanted to right. run run by the panel, and then uh, and then we'll wrap it up. This one, I this one I quite like. This is uh, Dame Edna asking Carl Chandler for a spot spot at Spleen. Oh, okay, this is good. I like I this. I thought this was particularly like inspiring. And then I could, I could, I could perhaps do an impression of Carl Chandler answering. Oh uh, yeah, Dame okay. Edna. Let's let's do it. Okay, let's Press do an act explain. out. All right, yeah. let's go. Okay, I think I've got it in me. So I'm I'm walking into Spleen. Here we go. Hello, possum. Um, just wondering if I can have a ten minute spot here next week. <laughs> um, hi, uh, hi, Dame Edna. No, um, sorry, we're we're all out. We've already uh, we've we've got people. Uh, we've we've just filled the last spot. Uh, uh, he's got a really good bit. Uh, apparently, it's Rodney Rude's bit, but it's killer, and he's taking the last spot. <laughs> okay, sorry, Dave. Okay. Come back okay, next. Okay, that's week. fine. What about headlining basement comedy this Saturday? I'm free for that. <laughs> I can do 45 minutes there. Are there any- <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, unfortunately, we've got Tom Ballard. He's uh, been working on his. Uh, he, he's he's launching his new book that he's written. So uh, yeah, that's all for. Re- oh, it's a reading. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With a nineteen-minute footnote. Yeah. <laughs> this this is. By the way, I've, I've, I think I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but before we 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 run out, the last literal job, office job I had, I uh, I just started comedy, and. Um, I, I think I've said this on the show before, but uh, I just started comedy and we went to the Christmas party and we were in a basement of a winery and they said, oh, we're going to do, we're going to have a bit of comedy. And everyone turned around to look at me and I was like, wow, I'm just going to get impromptu to ask up to, to do stand up. And I was about, I don't know, six months or nine months in or something. And, and they, they're just going to spring it on me like this. And what they did instead, they didn't introduce me to the stage. They introduced a famous sports writer to the stage. Now, this sports writer did not work for the company that I worked for. He had asked the company if he could deliberately come along and do a comedy spot. And he was impersonating Dame Edna. And he'd come along to the work Christmas party and brought his own Dame Edna glasses and then hopped on stage in front of a company that was mainly 20 to 30 year olds and then did an impression of Dame Edna, many of which people had never heard of Dame Edna. And then 
did about five minutes to absolute silence, which, in, which, which, <laughs> which included this line. How come they can put a man, they can put a man on the moon, but they can't put a man on Martina Navratilova? Of which no one had heard of Martina Navratilova <laughs> at this at this gig at this Christmas party, and then th- th- literally like three four minutes in, the entire party turned to me and went, "Can you do some comedy instead of this?" <laughs> and, yeah. Turned to you and went, "So is this is this the kind of thing you're going off and doing on Friday and Saturday nights? Is this, this the kind of shit you, you're going to leave the corporate world for?" <laughs> yeah, but then. But then maybe I possibly got one of the biggest laughs of my entire career because then I got to follow that. I got to follow. I got to step over the lowest bar of all (laughs) time. And I got to walk on, not be a 60-year-old man in funny glasses and not do a homophobic joke and just do anything. And they're like, fucking hell, you've saved the Christmas party. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, what, I mean, doing, like, where? what's the, where do we sit here, like, ethically on going, no, I'm doing an impression of a famous comedian like you can't cover comedy yeah, like you, just you're it, just yeah. being yeah. you're just yeah. doing the act like what yeah. with, with you guys like, hey everybody you guys like uh you guys like seinfeld all right we're gonna he's a great cover he's doing a lot of does a lot of seinfeld covers bring yeah. him out yeah. a couple of rodney yeah. roots yeah, them all yeah there was Man, that guy for a while I'm... that would do the um that would do all the comedy festivals as an andrew dice clay impersonator do you remember him he's like every mm. year just turning up doing a dice impression it's like that's being a being a guy that looks and sounds like someone who's like not quite still massive you know what i mean like you can't even really capitalize all that well <laughs> oh th- when i start when i first started there was a guy that had a routine that would go like this that would go oh i remember when you were a kid and you and you 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 get out the the delirious uh, a VHS and you'd watch Eddie Murphy's comedy special no. and it would go a little bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> you doing the material and like he would do so much of it that you would forget the context of it and you'd just be watching Eddie Murphy's material for a while and then he'd sort of at some stage finish and go, yeah, wasn't it funny back then when you do that and you go, oh, fuck, that's right. We're back to this guy again. We're yeah, not just... yeah, yeah. That is an Eddie Murphy on stage, a, a 45-year-old man with a crew cut. A white guy. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad move. It's just starting the set with like three solid covers. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, everyone's in the yeah. mood. Although it's a pretty hard gear change to then go, anyway, so I was at the nursery on the weekend. This, yeah, this, yeah, isn't yeah. As good as, this is not quite as good as the delirious stuff. But. Yeah, yeah. But also, you're also like a 40 year old white man getting up there going, I'll warm him up with a bit of, don't remember when Eddie Murphy said this, Q, N bomb, Q, yeah. homophobic <laughs> material. It's like, yes. I, dude, I don't think you're pulling it off without the red leather jacket. I don't think you've quite got this one, actually. <laughs> and it being yeah. the 80s, when you're allowed to say stuff about gay men having AIDS on their lips. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, better wrap it up for another week on the Little Dum Dum Club. Hamish Blake, Tom Ballard, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, have Hamish, place, have you got things you'd like to plug? Oh, I mean, as always, just everyone keep get out there and do your very best. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Just live your, live your life. <laughs> get Tom's book. Good advice. Get Tom's book. Pre-order it. Pre-order it. Uh, right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, I feel bad promoting anything now. I feel like I should be giving it an inspirational message about life. But no. Um, yeah, no, pre- get my book. You can't pre-order it yet. Um, I'll let everyone know when I you finish can, writing you, it. You, you can at Hamish Blake's uh, earlybooks.com. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm selling futures. Nice. What else have you got? What else is coming down the pipeline? <laughs> what do we got? We got Barack. We got Obama's follow up. Oh, yeah. I'm um, selling futures wow. on. Uh, we got another Max Walker book, maybe coming out. <laughs> oh, again. really? Is this, I, I, is this one of those cover comedians where it's a, a new person <laughs> taking over Max Walker? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Another, how to, that, that, you can, you how can, to hypnotize you can, Max Walker into being alive again. Okay. You right. Can, <laughs> you can get a $2, $2 non refundable coupon on that. Yep. <laughs> Gets you, great. gets you in front of the queue. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. Great, great. Cool, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Oh, okay. Well, thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you next time. See, see you, mate. See you, mate. <laughs>